All right, so the Kroot. We just learned about the Kroot. Um, apparently they got Necron AIDS and they're allied with the Tau, which is like the one wrong thing I think they did. They should have allied with hum humanity, I think. Nixty, take care of yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, we get some hearts in chat. It's Nixty's, Nixty's birthday today. So just some hearts in chat to send her off. Uh, in style. G'day guys and gal. The galaxy of 40k is a big place full of mean ass things. Malicious Xenos that want to eat your ass and then shit you out as one of their own. Soulless legions of cackling Skeletors and the most dreaded of all, the Tau. But there are other Xenos out there that are just here to have a good time. Xenos who have no great ambition or desire to conquer everyone, but instead just want to raise families, hunt and gather, and yeah, sure, eat your ass, but not in a malicious way. The Kroot are a prime example, incredibly strong, agile, and intelligent creatures. That's we are very lucky like. they don't have ambitions for galactic conquest, because like, they could probably manage it if they really wanted to. Today we'll go into the lore of the Kroot, where they come from, what are their unique abilities, and why they're just so damn powerful. Then we will dive into why they are one of the only Xeno races that the Imperium is happy to employ and work with. Let's get into it. I genuinely, when I thought about the Kroot, that was not what I imagined. Despite looking like dinosaurs, the Kroot actually evolved from birds. So it's kind of like a reverse Uno card when it comes to the birds of real life. To take the piss further, they originate on a planet called Petch, which is a playoff of Peck. Cause you know, beaks. God, GW does it again. What a classic. <laughs> Petch is a luscious world with extreme biodiversity. Biodiversity that is in a constant state of chowing down on itself. I'm not even kidding. Everything on the planet likes to eat each other. And that's a big reason as to why the crude is so powerful. See, what makes the crude so unique and special is the way that they've been able to force their own evolution. At some point, the precursors to the crude evolved the ability to absorb DNA from whatever living thing it consumed in order to improve and evolve itself. Mm -hmm. Hence all the Kroot and subspecies of Kroot on the planet of Petch rapidly evolved into their own subsects. Kroots that age large but dumb animals evolved to become larger but dumber, being forced to become pack animals for the more alpha intelligent Kroots. Kroots would also regularly cannibalize each other, hence gaining more evolution points from that as well. It'd be like doing a carnival run on Spore. As I mentioned earlier, this force evolution could go either way. If a crew was force-fed retarded dumb shit animals, then they would devolve into absolute plebs. However, if they were able to feed on an intelligent, powerful animals, then they would rise to the top. After thousands of years of eating, the Kroot had gained the power and intelligence to become an interstellar race, conquering numerous nearby worlds. I use conquering lightly, as they were probably not even inhabited, but still a solid effort. It's said that the final piece of the puzzle for them to build starships was due to a few of them consuming the flesh of orc mechs, giving them the ability to instinctively build shit. With more planets what came the? more opportunity to improve their DNA, hence the modern day Kroot are wildly powerful. They hit adulthood at 12 years old, making their numbers easy to replenish, but they also live to be over 100 years old, so they get that early maturity buff without the drawbacks of a shorter lifespan. The Kroot's first appearance in the setting was when a number of their worlds were being attacked by orcs, and it appeared that with their first taste of galactic warfare, they were going to lose. As the Kroot Empire was situated close to the Tau, the Tau were able to detect the war and go watch. Although the Tau were like, I am the Watcher, I do not interfere. They were soon like, Cowabunga it is! And they attacked the orcs from the rear, defeating their forces and saving the Kroot. Until a much larger orc armada appeared out of nowhere. The Tau were like, well, fuck me, dead, and call me Sally, as they expected to lose. However, something unexpected happened. The Kroot and the Tau joined forces and obliterated the Orcs. This was because the Kroot and the wow. Tau were the dream combo. The Kroot were hardy, strong, and agile. Great for holding the line, but they lacked significant firepower. The Tau were weak and slow, but had incredible firepower. Hence, both factions basically fixed the other's weakness. With the Orcs beaten, the Tau would go on to liberate the remaining Kroot worlds, hence forming a permanent alliance and welcoming Wait, the so Kroot. Wait, so the Tau are actually cheating? Because on their own, they're pretty fucking shit, but they've basically made a friend that happens to have all the strengths that they don't have and none of the weaknesses that they have. That is actually cheating in the world of 40k into the greater good. Now, it was a bit jarring. 
The greater good is all about, you know, tofu and shit. Whilst the Kruts religion was to literally cannibalize their dead as they believed it freed the souls from the dead body. The Tao eventually seek to stop the Kruts from cannibalizing, but yeah, good luck with that one, buddy. The Kruit Dingers gained power due to the new alliance with the Tau. They also had a shitload of new orc bodies that needed consuming. By consuming the orcs, the Kruit genetics began to swing towards strength and resilience, something that would be very useful to the horrors of the 40k universe. I'll go deeper into what happens to a Kruit- Wait, 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 wait. So, consuming the orcs would make them grow strong and resilient, but wouldn't that then also make them stupid? Because orcs are pretty fucking stupid. And they take on whatever the fuck they consume. And they eat enough of each race later in the video. From here, whilst the Croods have featured heavily in the lore, they don't really have many stories that are just about them. It's kind of like the Tyranid problem. People love Tyranids, but having a book just about Tyranids would be kind of shit. It would just be like, nom 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 nom, like printed like a million times. However, Croods excel True. in short stories often in horrifying fashion. After all, big ass bird dinosaurs that want to eat your flesh is actually pretty fucking scary. The Imperium's first encounter with the Kroot was during the Damocles Crusade, when the Kroot launched various successful ambushes on Imperial Guardsmen, killing them and consuming them before they could even let out a warning call. It was only when the Space Marines got involved did the Kroot start to back off a bit. Like, the Kroot are smart. They invented their own spaceships and shit. They aren't mindless berserkers or war lovers. They pick their battles and they fight hard and well. There's a short story which still kind of spooks me, where some Eldar Rangers are traveling through the jungle. Now, Eldar Rangers are no joke. Very stealthy, very well trained, and very difficult to ambush, but the crew managed to do it anyway. The crew attacked the rangers and they massacred them, eating their flesh before the battle is even finished. You can see this from the perspective of the ranger commander, as she watches in horror as her- You see, I think you could write a turnit book, but it would be- it would literally go against everything that Warhammer 40k books are. So for those of you that's never read a Warhammer 40k book, it's almost always in the first person. So Warhammer 40k books don't really do third person narrate like narrator style stories. But all of the books that I've read so far pretty much the different chapters will tell the story through different people's eyes. So whatever you see, it's usually that person talking to themselves or that person to uh, remarking on how they feel about this person or whatever the case may be. They don't do narrative writing. So there's no narrator that's a third person that, that isn't in the room. But you could technically do that for the nids. Since they don't speak, you could probably have a book where it's sort of like just narrated what they're up to and what they're doing. No? Sister is torn in half and devoured. Then she screams as she too is torn to shreds. Very rough, but it- Barcelazo, have you never read a Warhammer 40k book? It's, by the way, that's the mechanism that Games Workshop has used in order to retcon just about everything in their universe. So there's about two ways in how they do it. Novartic, thanks for the 300 bits, bro. Really appreciate that. Wait, why is it not fucking reading out? Oh, because it's 500 bits minimum. It's 500 bits. Um, I think it says that on the document as well. It should. Let's try that again. Yeah, 500 bits. It's a thousand bits to do the custom sounds and sound effects. It's 500 bits to just do the Trump voice because Trump is the the standard voice. Um, oh, Parcelazo, what I was saying, right? There's two mechanisms that Games Workshop utilizes in order to retcon things in their universe. The one is the Chaos God's most likely Zitch. Because Zeech is sort of like the, the Chaos God of Change. So basically, if they don't like something that happened, they just Zeech it up and suddenly it all changes. But mostly, what they do is they use this first-person narrative thing. So 
I saw something and I remarked on what I saw, but the other person may have seen something completely different. So you'll never actually know what the truth is of the universe until you've like saw it from five or six different angles and you've heard what all those people have to say. So there's no such thing in Warhammer 40k as canon. Canon doesn't exist. But then at the same time, everything is canon. Because of course it is. And I'll leave that to you to figure out how fucking confusing that is. But that's really how it works. It really shows off the versatility of the crews. Powerful enough to hold the line against the orcs and stealthy enough to ambush Eldar Rangers. The crew were also instrumental oh, yeah. in various Tau victories over the Tyranids. By forming a powerful front line, the Tyranids struggled to reach the firepower of the Tau, which was tearing them apart. If it wasn't for the Kroot, then the Tyranids probably would have done significantly more damage to the Tau in their first few encounters. Tau's don't like to melee, but the Kroot are more than happy to. The Kroot are split up yeah. into various warbands or sub-factions called Kindreds, which are led by a Shaper. This is important as when a Kroot eats something, they don't just gain all its characteristics overnight. On top of that, a lot of the Kroot just like eating random shit, which can result in their DNA being loaded with useless weaker life forms. As such, it's the Shaper's role to basically act as a dietitian for his kindred and direct them to feed on the correct life forms. If a kindred is aiming to become big and strong, the Shaper will engage them in war zones where orcs and space marines reside. If they seek to become smarter and more nimble, then the Shaper will direct them to attack Elder or even humans. A Kroot can't absorb everyone's DNA and become a god. DNA only has a certain amount of room in it. Even with Kroot having more room in their DNA than let's say humans, it's still not infinite. When Kroot feed on a certain race, they're doing it more for future generations rather than themselves. Like sure, the Kroot who ate 1000 orcs will get bigger and stronger, but it's his children who will reap the real rewards and so on. Something uh -huh. interesting to note though, that whilst major genetic traits take a while to materialize, the personality traits and quirks of those they eat begun to manifest very quickly. If a crew eats someone who is very artistic, it's likely that they will begin to be artistic. So what happens to a crew or that crew's uh -huh. future generations, when they eat a lot of a certain race? Well, as said for the orcs, they gain increased muscle and resilience, but can also get a bit stupider, as one would expect when they become a bit more orky. Yeah. Orky Kroots would also lose a lot of their stealthiness, so this one could be considered a bit of a shit evolution. What about humans? Well, it actually depends. There's a story where the Kroot are fighting and eating Katachin jungle fighters, and as a result of this, they eventually start wearing red bandanas, disobeying orders, and speaking like <laughs> Arnie. I added in that last part, but I wouldn't be surprised. As humans don't have wildly unique or outgoing DNA, Kroots who chow down on them don't have yeah. radical changes. Perhaps they become more intelligent, but it really depends on what type of human they eat. If they eat skinny nerds, then they'll shrink and get smarter. If they eat beefy boys, then they might get more buff. If they eat downers, then they might gain an extra chromosome. Consuming the Elder, on the other hand, has some very noticeable and pretty overpowered effects. Mm -hmm. Elder souls and DNA were hand-engineered to perfection by the old ones. Pretty much every character who is obsessed with harvesting souls or experimenting with flesh and blood prioritized the Eldar. A crew who consumes Eldar flesh will have dramatic personality changes. Those that eat Dark Elder will become a bunch of sadistic brooding assholes, whilst those that eat Craftworlders will become quite pretentious. In terms of genetic changes, Kroot infused with Craftworld or Exodite Elder DNA have the potential to become very powerful psychers, which is a huge issue for anyone who wants to mess with the greater good. Fortunately for the rest of the galaxy, Elder and Kroot combat is rare, so there aren't many opportunities Wait, to die. So they can actually become psychers just by consuming psychers? Dude, that's overpowered as fuck! on space elf flesh, but it has happened and the consequences were spicy. If a Kroot eats a Necron, they get really sick. No fucking shit. Anything related to Chaos mm -hmm. is a no-no for Kroots to eat, as if they do so, they are literally infusing their DNA with Chaos corruption. Not oh. ideal. On top of this, the Kroot also refuse to consume Tyranids, as by infusing themselves with Tyranid DNA, they basically become gene stealers. Look, Crooty boy. I know gene stealers have some big titty babes, but it's just not worth it. Kroot can also eat Astartes, although it's difficult because Astartes are hard to kill. If a Kroot consumes gene seed, there's a good chance that its offspring will be very, very powerful and a huge mm -hmm. asset to the Kroot, but this is so rare that there doesn't seem to be much in the lore about it. 
The Kroot refused to eat Tao, and to do so is punishable by death, as a sign of respect for the Tao for saving their asses. Even a dead Tao is off limits, but also like, who would want Tao DNA? So with this very powerful force evolution ability, why aren't Kroot a bigger galactic threat? Well, it's because they aren't particularly ambitious or have much in the way of critical thinking. Their goal is to consume and evolve. This is why the Kroot are happy to sell their services as mercenaries. Mercenaries are sent across the galaxy and have access to a huge variety of DNA. Rogue traders and even inquisitors have been known to employ Kroot as bodyguards or even bounty hunters. What? The Kroot also weren't one of the Xeno races that bullied humanity during the Age of Strife, so they're given a pass. Lucky for everyone, a Kroot is horrifying in combat. In the Ravenor books, a basic Kroot warrior is shown to be more powerful than the best human warrior in the entire novel. Gotta admire them. In a wow. galaxy full of war, opportunity, temptations and darkness, Kroot just want to have a fat snack so that they can give their kids bigger biceps. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of small hammer sh shmentai. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button <laughs> for more edible content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Dude. Th the Kroot seems hacked. They, it just seems way too fucking powerful. But you see, here's the problem. If they're evolving that fast, then especially as the kids are born, you know, it gets even more and more accentuated. There could come a time where they could where they could actually turn into a threat for the galaxy. Where they could evolve to a point where now they do want to stand on their own and they, they do want to conquer the galaxy. And how the fuck are you going to actually deal with that thing? Nasty melee units, try and check out the uh, Dawn of War or Soulstorm game. I'm insanely fun and good 40k units and armies to choose from. Omar, I, I have Dawn of War. We're talking 50 or 60k Yarako. Yeah, we're obviously not talking, you know, uh, tomorrow. But in 50 or 60k Warhammer, you could absolutely have the crew be a fearsome fucking warrior. Again, breeding. Shit, so they could actually eventually become... Or run out of fucking food. Yeah, so we're only caring about the, the people of the now. We're not thinking about the future. Alright, I can get behind that.